testosterone injections absolutely rule the testosterone replacement world. Why is this important? Because more players are getting involved in testosterone replacement for men on a very large scale. In this video today, I will present to you the statistical data on what's going on with this and the global market details. Also talk about other forms of testosterone delivery that right now do not even touch testosterone injections. We're going to go into why. I'm going to break down every single one of the other forms of testosterone delivery systems. And then of course in the end, I'm going to review testosterone injections in detail, history, the accessibility, all the reasons, the dosing schedules, and even the side effects because testosterone is no joke. What I see going on right now is unprecedented as far as how many men are getting on testosterone and I've been giving concern about this because it's going to have impacts on men's health. There's going to be good, but you have to be careful. Let's get into the presentation. Absolutely, no one's going to argue that injections of testosterone rule the world of testosterone replacement. Maybe 90%, I would say at least 75%, and I'm going to show you why here in the end. Let's go into the data. But who are all these men? Who's on testosterone? Here's the data, and you could fact check this data. In North America, 20 million men have low testosterone. 90% are unaware. This comes from big players. You could fact check all this stuff. The global financial implications on testosterone, 2020 worth 3.1 billion, projected by 2030 to be 5.1 B. That's a B, guys, billion. That's the world global market. More statistical data from public health experts. Men that are greater than 45 years old, supposedly 40% of them are hypogonadal, have low testosterone. Why? Because of obesity. It's very straightforward. Is it, are there contributions of conspiracy theories where there's, we're poisoning men? I don't think so. People are overweight. That contributes to this. We're going to talk about it in a minute. I have more data. Are there phytochemicals? Are there fertilizers in the food systems? Is there plastics and phytochemicals and plastics and all, absolutely all the above? But most importantly, without doubt, it's obesity and diabetes and prediabetes. Obesity and diabetes. 30 to 50% of these men or hypogonadal. Fact check this from the Endocrine Society. It's the number one and oldest, largest group society of expert physicians and people, scientists, that work on hormones in the world. Endocrine Society. Fact check it. Fact check these numbers. Now, now do you see the implications of what's going on? These numbers are outstanding. But for today, I think in the future, testosterone injections are going to rule. You want to hear why? Let's go. Let's talk about the other forms of testosterone delivery system. I got them all right here. Let's go with oral. This is interesting. It's been out there for a while, but in America, North America, there's two new forms in the last couple of years, even one more recently, and I'm not going into trade names. I don't, I'm not here to, to uh, pump commercial stuff. It's testosterone undecanate. It's taken twice a day with food. It runs through and delivers through the lymphatic system. It's not an oral antibiotic steroid, 17 alkylated, where it's like Anadrol or D-Ball. 
Everyone thinks you're going to take a pill of testosterone. It's going to wreck the, the, the liver. And this doesn't because it runs through the lymphatic system. Fact check it. Very complicated science. It's taken BID. The compliance is going to be an issue. The compliance is an issue because I prescribed it. Cost is outrageous. It's outrageous compared to injections. The long-term efficacy, we don't know. Men really don't like to take, it doesn't work as well as injections. Let's keep going. And there's no bias. I've been doing it for 20 years with patients, 30 years for myself. So I could tell you right there, this is going to be tough. These guys think it's a huge market. And for guys who don't want injections and don't want transdermal and the other forms, absolutely, this could be big. And it's going to have some of the market. And it's getting some of the market. But I tell you, it's, it's, it's tough to take it twice a day, to remember it. That's big. And it's expensive. It's expensive. Insurance companies are moving by the wayside. They don't want to cover medicines for old ladies that have heart disease. Let's be honest about that. Transdermal. Transdermal gels and creams, again, they could work. The effectivity for men, it, it pales when you look at giving free testosterone right in an injection, either IRM or sub-Q. This is the world speaking right here, right to the streets. So the compliance is, is tough. You have to put it on every day. It, it's just, the, the compliance is tough. You the compliance, guys don't, transfer. You could transfer this, I've seen it, to children and to partners, black box warning, Game changer right there. That's potential. And cost. It's expensive. All this, this stuff is like hundreds of dollars per month. Injections, dirt cheap. Let's keep going, guys. Nasal. I did a lot of research for you guys, but this is my day job, so I did it right out of my head. Nasal. You have to, you have to, you could put this, this gel up in your nose three times a day. Sniff, 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 sniff. That's pretty wild stuff. I think it could work. It's, again, compliance. Are you going to take this stuff and pump it up your nose three times a day? Hey, what's going on, guys? Pump, 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 pump. I mean, at lunch, I don't know, maybe. Fertility. Supposedly, this stuff may actually preserve fertility, unlike the other forms, including every other form here, can shut down the hypothalamus pituitary gonadoaxis, and you will be infertile. This is like a steroid, guys. It's really a, it's, it's an androgenic steroid, but it's just testosterone. Cost. So when you talk about the nasal, the, the nasal, it's going to be, again, it's, it's, this is expensive. These, uh, these are all basically uh, trade name. Okay, trade name versus generic. You see, trade name generic. This stuff, injections, been around since the 1950s. Six, 50s to 70s, they made all these things. They're dirt cheap. They're completely off Patent protection, it's all generic, and they work. So oral, transdermal, gels and creams, nasal, pellets. Come on, let's keep going. Pellets. They put a pellet in the butt. It's, it, is it effective? Let me tell you, it's long-term dosing where they put these pellets, maybe up to like 10 pellets, into your into a with a trocar subcutaneously into uh, the region at the top. It's not in the muscle. It's it's a subcutaneous. They put it in there with a trocar. It's this very quick little procedure, but it's a technical procedure. You know, I don't do this procedure. Typically, it's specialists that get trained to do it, but they're doctors. It's not rocket science, and urology doctors can do it because they're surgeons. So with the pellet, it's a very long trajectory. So you're, you're doing it, they're, they're, they're putting these in every four to six months. For guys, you know, lazy guys and guys don't want injections, it's great, potentially. But the trajectory of the free testosterone, and I could tell you, you could fact check this, will go up. It, it's a very slow rise and slow down. Okay, up, slow, down. Men don't like it versus injections because you're right on top of the micro injections you're getting free testosterone regularly to the nut this is the nut guys it's all about the brain and how you feel right so pellets i i and then it's cost again those are expensive and it's, it's technically difficult so it's limited for who can do it but again it can be great for guys it can be great for you have to understand all these Last, patch. There's old-fashioned patch, even one on the, on the testicle. No one uses the patch anymore. Some people do. You can use the patch. The patch is basically transdermal, okay, going through the skin. And buccal. 
old school stuff, you can put this, this buccal formulation between the cheek and gum, kind of like a skull pad, like, a, like, like chewing tobacco. You put it right there. It's free. It's amazing. Again, I don't, I just, no one uses that, guys. That, that's old school stuff. Okay, here we go. Testosterone injections from the 1950s, maybe even before. Okay, you could look at my videos on this. So what do you got? Accessibility is wide open. It's easy. It's cheap. Propanate, sipinate, enanthate, sustenon 250, and there's a long-acting injection called testosterone undecanate. Hold on a minute. You heard that already. So the oral form, it's the same it's the same base medicine as the oral form, but this is in a long-acting ester that goes on. And you, you, they injected, the Europeans injected every, every season. So it's every three months. In America, it's less. It's about every 10 months because they were concerned for the side effect of, of pulmonary oil embolism, guys, because you're putting a huge, up to a, up to a thousand milligrams, America 750, into the, the glute in one shot and you gotta have a doctor sit in the room and watch you after it for, uh, for reactions, okay? So again, this is a tricky one, right? But, but everyone else just uses Sipinate and Nate and Sussanon 250 and that is the world. And again, young guys, this is not pretty stuff. You get on testosterone, there's gonna be a piper to pay. There's side effects. I, that my whole life is about explaining side effects. Any wise guys that think I'm trying to be excited and to show how great this stuff is, this is science. So sit back, wise guy, because men need to know this is for educational purposes. And look at the numbers. This is the, the real medical guys are getting into this now. You see that number right there? Billions. It's all about the money, unfortunately. That's why I'm doing this. I've been doing this for almost 20 years. So it's not about the money for me. This is about education for these men out in the world. So pay attention. So doctors, so when it comes to injections, they feel comfortable with this. I don't like that doctors just give a whole big bolus every two weeks to a month with Sipinate because it goes up and down, but you can, you can microdose, and so many men are. All the anti-aging places, they basically give small injections, right? But they give too much, and all the anti-estrogens and all the crazy gonadarellins and all this garbage, and this is like not the way to do it. So... When you look at it, it's cost. It's the bottom line for almost everything in our world comes down to cost. This stuff is super expensive, oral, transdermal, nasal. The, the injections with good RX for a 10 cc, it's, it's 40 bucks for three months. Do the math, guys. 300 bucks or more a month, this stuff is 40 bucks for three months, okay? This is super, super, super cheap. And it's easy to get, accessibility, doctors feel comfortable. Doctors let, most doctors let patients do it, intermuscular, a sub-Q, by the patient. You don't need to go in to get a doctor or trocar. You don't need to be pumping up the nose. You don't need to do it every day because men, the compliance is huge. That's why I did this for you guys. So microdosing is it. The cost is going to be the bottom line. We have a lot of different types of injections. Now, the side effects. There's a lot of side effects. The side effects of testosterone from the FDA are all cut and pasted, and they te te technically should be, right? So your hair loss, mood changes, changes in fertility, hypothalamus pituitary gonadal axis changes, acne, gynecomastia, heart disease, potentially. A lot of data looking at this. We got some big stuff going on. Big, big study came out. We're going to see what the data shows on that. More on that later testicles, prostate, okay? So, and, and then the red blood cells, okay? So I can tell you this. So testosterone injections, you could, you could, you could microdose those. You can keep your, your finger right on that pulse and try to give baby doses. And it's important to do that versus big boluses. Not to mention guys feel better. But when it comes down, when it comes down to this right here, androgen-induced erythrocytosis, and you see that venous thromboembolism. I think there's really no data for this, but it's pretty clear to me that it's strong stuff, the injections, and those red blood cells can go up. And if you look at that data, look at that red blood cell, that potential polycythemia and the iron overload, this is the most important thing and what I'm working on right now with my patients. 
because that is very technical. So injections, the side effects, apart from microdosing, the, the, I would say the most important side effect, crucially, beyond the heart, the heart is a no-brainer, but I can micromanage all this stuff. The blood pressure, the cholesterol, the A1C. We can look at calcium scores. I could micro. I do it all for myself, and I help my patients do it. And that's on the Anabolic Doc app. You can get all this information from me and have access to all this information. This is where it's going, guys. But in the end of the day, those red blood cells from injections are definitely something to be very, very concerned for. And this is a reason why you may want to use some of these other forms. But the other forms, they're going to cause the red blood cells to go up as well. Hope you guys really like this. I'm so excited because when you look at the marketplace, so many men are getting on testosterone, which of course I love. I think it's cool. It's what I do. I'm a testosterone-ologist. I'm the world's first testosterone-ologist and the only testosterone-ologist right now. But I, I think don't just jump on testosterone because we see it's from obesity. We, we see it's from behavior changes. So before you get on testosterone and have to be on it and deal with all these issues I'm talking about, try to clean up the diet and try to really diagnose other issues that you can move away and not be on testosterone. And if you need to be on testosterone, you can start it later, not at 28 years old, but it is what it is. It's a huge market. You're going to have tons of marketing pressure on it now because they see the money. And that's just something that I have nothing to do with. I can't believe it because I see the market trends and I know in the end it's going to be all about the money for the big boys and you guys know it's true. Let's get a lot of comments, guys. And again, share this video with all the men that are not on testosterone that are looking into it because they really need to see this channel and understand the truth in education and knowledge is power. Thank you. I'd like to introduce the Anabolic Docs mailbag where men can submit questions to me via email confidentially and I will respond to your questions, make videos pre-recorded and put them back on the app right here on the area called Anabolic Docs mailbag. I realize so many men are not going to the man-to-man -man meetings where I'm live answering questions. So I want to give you guys another option, another medium for me to respond and answer your questions. I'd like you to use the form below to submit medical questions to me. We're going to compile the best medical questions, produce a pre-recorded video, and put it right back on the app for you to see.